You're watching WCSD Cable Television from Cowie County High School. He is a preacher at New Concord Church of Christ and is always preaching the Word of God to lots of people. You might have seen him before or maybe you haven't. My name is Jamie Miller and my guest today is Russ Crosswhite, a pulpit minister at New Concord who will answer some spiritual questions. This and more on Callaway Connections. Oh. Okay, so Russ Crosswhite, and I know I've seen you a lot of times at New Concord Church of Christ. Uh, what, does, uh, what does faith mean to you? Well, faith uh, means basically a belief in God um, based upon the uh, evidence that we have in creation. Yeah. Romans 1 talks about that. Also, upon the fact that the Bible is the inspired Word of God. Yeah. And that uh, teaches us about God. A supreme being, God the Father, God the Son, God yeah. the Holy Spirit. That's what faith is. So, yeah, I know it's, it's wonderful, you know, to go to church and to hear the Word and, you know, to try to live by it, you know, and that's, you know, that's what's, you know, really interesting about being a Christian. Um, what is the difference between a Christian and an atheist? Because I know a Christian tries to live by God's Word, and an atheist, he, you know, he's sort of, you know, he's not really into... Uh, I guess you'd say try to not live spiritually. I, I don't really know, but w mm -hmm. what is your you know opinion on that? Mm -hmm. Like based on the word, yeah. Well, the main difference is um, uh, our belief systems. Uh, atheists have a belief system. Yeah. They just don't believe the same thing that a Christian does. Yeah. Uh, a Christian believes that the God of the Bible is the true and living God and a supreme being. Yeah. Where an atheist has a belief system, he just does not believe. Yeah. Uh, in a divine being, Jamie. So, an atheist, what do they believe in? Because I know they don't believe in God, right? Or what's well, you got you got uh, different. Uh, I guess you could say different forms of atheists. You have an agnostic who will yeah. say, "I'm not sure. There might be a God. There might not be." An mm -hmm. atheist, a pure atheist, says that there is no supreme being. That we're here simply by blind chance. Um, but uh, that's the difference, I believe. So, uh, should we love the world? Is there like I guess you'd say like anything in the world. Could, I mean, do we need to take it all out? Like, should we love the world? Well, uh, 1 John chapter 2, uh, verse 15 and following says to love not the world. Yeah. Then it goes on to say, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the yeah. lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Yeah. Uh, that we're not to love the things of the world that are sinful. Uh, that are oh, wrong. okay. Yeah. So basically, things that are sinful, then we don't really need to love those. Yeah, because you know, when we try to live spiritual, man, I'm blushing. <laughs> when, when we try to live spiritual, we should look on things that you know are above, and you know. To me, I try to live as spiritually as I can. There's sometimes when you know I'm not confident, but then again, I you know I got to find a way to be spiritual. And, you know, the only way you can be spiritual is to, you know, to read the Word to God. Mm -hmm. So that's really the only way. Um, should we worry about things that are going on around us? Cause well, I make a statement sometimes. I've preached this in sermons. We ought to be concerned about things, but really not worry. Paul said in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Uh, depend on the Lord. Trust Him. Live for Him. He'll take care of us. Uh, be concerned, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Jesus basically said, "Don't don't worry. I'll take care of things." Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, when we try to be dedicated Christians, what should be going on in our minds constantly? Um, yeah. Well, uh, a number of things I would say, uh, Jamie. Um, for example, in Matthew 16, Jesus said, if anybody will come after me, let them deny themselves, take yeah. up their cross and follow me. Yeah. Uh, a dedication to Christ, uh, a devotion to Jesus uh, would be uh, one thing. And that would lead to, obviously, uh, the way we think, the way we act, yeah. have the mind of Christ. Yeah. Philippians 2, 5 and other passages we might could look to. Um, is it always a challenge living a Christian life? Or well, I would not say always, uh, yeah. but a good bit of the time, I believe yeah. it would be. 
Yeah, because yeah. I know there's a lot of challenging times in a Christian's life. You know, they struggle sometimes, and then sometimes they don't. Yeah. Or they feel like they're not going through a struggle, but really that they're going through a struggle, you mm -hmm. know. And, you know, I just think that if we try to be, like, when we try to be spiritual, or, that's the best we can do, right? Like, is there, yeah. Well, you know, p p try to study the Bible and understand it and, and apply it properly. Yeah. Uh, but it's always a challenge because you're going to have the devil that's, Oh yeah. First Peter 5 <laughs> yeah. says, like a roaring lion, yeah. he's going to he's gonna try to devour us. Up. He's going to try to make us sin, yeah. but we got to, you know, stand firm. Yeah. Yeah. So. When you're around people of, you know, like precious faith, it's easier. Uh, but that's not always the case. Yeah. And so uh, it is a challenge, no question about that. It's never... It's ne God has never promised us a rose garden every day. Yeah, cause, yeah, yeah. I know it is challenging. Um, did, I, did I ask you that when you look at the world? What do you see? Did I ask you that? Or uh, no, I don't believe we've looked at that one. No. So uh, when you look at the world, what do you see? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I see both positive and negative. Yeah, I, I see a lot of good folks that want to do good. I see a lot of good things that are going, but you see a lot of a lot of bad things. We live in a sinful world, yeah. and uh, we yeah. we are challenged before that. And we because of uh, technology today, oh, yeah, we see technology. a lot of it a yeah. lot qu quicker yeah, than we used it, to. Yeah, because anything you look up, you know, it's going to pop up on there. Uh, I go by Wikipedia. Um, do you look at Wikipedia a lot? Or? I do some. Yeah, because I know that Wikipedia is you know that's mm -hmm. more. Um, I guess more reliable than other sources, um, but well, it's you know it's not a hundred percent, but it's yeah. uh, it's a good start probably. Yeah, and yeah, don't uh, get all your information just strictly from Facebook. <laughs> yeah, because I see I don't I don't do Facebook <laughs> yeah. much. I, yeah. I have Facebook, but I don't do it yeah. much. Uh, um, what does it mean to take care of the temple? Because I know that um, is that like. Just dealing with food, or does that mean more than that? Well, in uh, 1 Corinthians 6, the Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And therefore, God wants us to, if we live the lifestyle God wants us to live, yeah. uh, we'll be taking care of the temple. When a person becomes a Christian, then the Holy Spirit resides in that person, dwells in that individual. And therefore, we should live uh, with that in mind, with that thought in mind. So I'm that would challenge us not to do things that would harm our bodies. Now, I, I'm not an atheist, you know. I, <laughs> I, well, what, what would you say to someone who has never been baptized, they're an atheist, when you try to... Can an atheist, now I'm not saying I am, but can an atheist make it to heaven? Uh, in their atheism without belief. For example, Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 34, unless you believe that I am he, you'll yeah. die in your sins. Yeah. And so if a person dies without believing that Jesus is who he claims to be, according yeah. to the Bible, they will be lost. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, Mm. We may take a break. If that is that okay or yeah, okay. So we're going to take a break, um, and we'll come back to ask uh, Russ Russ miles an hour or questions and this more on Go! color connections. Be tolerant of farm equipment on the road. After all, farmers are the ones who feed us. And he's training the same way as me. Go! A message from the Callaway County Farm Bureau and the Callaway County FFA Chapter. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man.
Hello, my name is Jamie Miller, and here back on Callaway Connections with Russ Crosswhite. Um, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about New Concord Church of Christ, like what's going on around there? Because I know I go there, but um, bulletin board, yeah. Well, Jamie, you know, we have our regular services on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, the young people finished up the annual Bible Bowl that yeah. they participated in last yeah. night. That went real well. So we have a lot of activities for our young people. Yeah. Uh, have a variety of age groups in the church. That's good. Uh, I, know, I know Bible Bowl. I know they do Church Eat Church. I love that. Church Eat Church is really cool. And they have... Uh, Don't you wish we'd do that all the time? <laughs> you know, every Sunday. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I tell you, you know, Church Eat Church, you know, you get so much food and then fill up and then you go to church after that. Yeah. But yeah, that's really cool. Um, is it hard for you to stay awake after that? <laughs> yeah, I, I tell you, I, I eat and then I go to services in the evening. So, <laughs> I understand. Uh, but, uh, yeah. but anyways, um, is there anything else that's going on? Or, like, how did you get into preaching? Uh, well, in my sophomore year in college, I just decided I wanted to preach. I'd gotten real serious about Christianity. Yeah. And therefore, I kind of devoted myself to doing that. That's good. Um I know this is a simple question, but what age did you get baptized? Because I know I got, well, yeah. let's not brag about my age. Uh, like, what age did you get baptized? Uh, I was almost 13 years of age, like a month or so, being 13. Yeah, because I, I was 13, too. I know my dad was 17 or 18 when he got baptized. So, um, trying to think of something else. Um, what is your favorite Bible verse? There we go. That was one of the questions that I had on here, but I never did ask. Well, that's a hard one, but I guess if I had to just pick one, would be maybe uh, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, okay, uh, we're, we're going to wrap it up. And thanks, Crosswhite, for, um, for uh, Thank Russ Crosswhite, for interviewing. Oh, that was a, I should have. There we go. That's better. I need to get a firm handshake. Okay, so that'll be it for Callaway Connections. Until next time, I'm Jamie Miller, and yeah. Yeah.